Okay. All right, hello there. Welcome to our virtual neighborhood right now. And if you notice, we're actually right outside. Remember those flowers that we saw there last time? Because we have a great opportunity of meeting some furry friends, two furry friends and the, the wonderful owners that they belong to. So I'm gonna turn this around. Maybe you can guess what, what kind of furry friend might be right outside here. Um, I'll give you a hint that they have four legs. They have uh, really kind of pointy ears. Um, they, love to, they love to have their tongue stick out um, and they're many different colors as well. And I used to have them when I was growing up and you probably have one in your family. So you guys ready? Here we go. Drum roll, please. These are Welsh corgis. And this is Mike and Barb Nadeau. These are two of my special friends here. And if you notice, they have some really cool masks on. So probably you have some really cool masks back at home. Maybe you've kind of made some camouflage ones or SpongeBob ones or Avengers ones. And so they have theirs on as well. And now the dogs don't necessarily have those on because they have those big giant tongues. So, oh, it says no sound. So I wonder, maybe something's muted right now. Maybe if anyone else can tell me, is there sound? And then that way I will know. All right, we're definitely live right now. So maybe, um, let me see. I'm gonna just test this out. Um, is there sound? Let's see. It's funny, sometimes these happen here. So let me know if you can hear me, please give me a thumbs up. Um, and if not, nope, not yet. Okay. You know, oh, yes, there is sound. Okay, so probably it looks like, um, it looks like you might need to maybe turn on sound if need be. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll keep going here. So we have, let's see, who is this right here? Well, Father, I'm gonna take my mask off and okay. stay, stay away and do yep. social distance. This yeah. is Zoe. So this is Zoe right here. Zoe is a five-year-old Welsh Corgi. A five-year-old Welsh Corgi. She's, she's a Pembroke and she was born on a cattle ranch wow. in Iowa. She was born on a cattle ranch in Iowa. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. And then who is this right here? This is Quigley. He's eight years old. And we believe because he's so big that he's a cardigan. He's a very cardigan. furry. cardigan, okay. He's got lots more fur than she does. Very thick fur. Okay. And he was born, uh, well, he came from a breeder um, in Samanac. Oh, in Samanac. That's right next yeah. door there. Yeah. yeah. And, and if I understand right, these are Welsh corgis. That means they came from the island of Wales originally. Okay. So English. Okay. And they were, um, they were first bred to herd cattle. And oh, okay. Herd with H E R D. Okay. So that means they collect the cows. They collect the cows. Like okay. A, like a shepherd. Okay. They collect the sheep. Oh, these are okay. cattle herders, and they would they'll round up little children. They'll round up ducks, they'll round up other animals. They love bringing dogs. things together. They'll bring everybody together and they'll get everybody to behave. So oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> they're wonderful. Beautiful, and, yeah. And you might notice that Zoe does not have a tail. Oh, she doesn't have a tail. What, so where'd the tail go? They dock their tail. Okay. Because um, they are supposed to be on a cattle ranch or okay. around horses. A lot of people who have horses like to have porgies. Okay. And those big hooves might stomp on their tail. Oh, wow, that would kind of hurt, and they'd it probably kind of get stuck there if uh, that's right. If but they stomped some, on their tail. Someone forgot to dock Quigley's oh, tail. Oh, I see. 
That's a big tail so versus quickly, will you no stand tail. Up here? Show what you can do show with your tail. tail. Show, show how you... pretty you are. Oh, look at he uses oh, his. Look at that. Look what he uses his tail for. Wow. <laughs> and he must have some British in him because he will yes. sit like a butler for quite a long time. That's oh, awesome. Sit, sit. He does look like a butler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Zoe can't do that. She lets him do all the tricks. And okay. He gets the treats. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That is so funny. So tell me more about like how every every kind of dog, every kind of breed of dog has different stories about about um, you know some of their personality or some of maybe what they well, you know what true. they do or maybe if, where their name comes from and any of those kind of things. Well, that's true. Every dog has a certain uh, personality and a certain purpose. So okay. a lot of people that have German Shepherds, those are taller dogs. Uh, some of them are very good with their ability to to actually the, a shepherd would be a herder too but they, they use them as police dogs etc when you have a, a dog with long ears that's a, a hound dog and hound they dog. use their nose okay and they're very good for sniffing out people who are lost and they're also oh. good for sniffing out in corners of school buildings or airports very nice these dogs have big ears they do have big ears big eyes yeah and so they're a sight dog okay they use their eyes see. and their ears to know where they are wow, and their okay. ears will really turn around like a bunny's ears yeah like they yeah almost like a horse's ears too a little so bit they're not really good for catching like mice or things like that okay Some people like to use dogs for that because okay because they use their eyes and their ears they don't use their nose as much they don't use their nose as much so they're so, not like a hound dog so in it's that interesting sense. if you're walking your dog and watching other people walk their dogs they'll they'll walk differently they'll oh act differently. yeah and so when you start looking it's really interesting to get to know all the different kinds of dogs but these have a very special story okay because they are from as I said, the islands of Wales. Okay. So they're used up in Ireland, Scotland, and England. Okay. And that's where my family's from. That's where all of our fairy tales come from. Oh, sure. Yep. So the the one really cool thing about these dogs is one of our one of our fellow parishioners said that my dogs look like a box. <laughs> <laughs> they do look like a box. That's because right. They're so short, and they yes. actually say they don't have legs; they have stumps. They, yeah, yeah. Their legs are so little that they look more like stumps versus uh, versus and legs. Zoe yeah. Are both only twelve inches tall? Wow. So that's twelve inches. That's one. That's just one foot tall. And and, and his little legs are only like this long. Wow. So he's very very short, but because they're so short. In olden days, the fairies could ride on them. Oh, so there's a neat little story yeah. about the fairies, how they could ride on them. The story is That's that a neat little children fairy tale. were playing in the forest and they came across the fairies. Okay. And the fairies were having a procession in the woods and they saw the fairies riding on the dogs because they're just the right size for a fairy to jump oh. on top. And so That's the fun. fairies liked the children. The children were so good uh -huh. that they gave the children to corgi dogs. Okay. And corgi is Welsh for sm core is small and g is dog. So corgi is a small dog. Small dog. Mm -hmm. And if you That's look neat. at Quigley especially, right here, there's an indent where his hair goes, it's puffy yep. up here, yep. gets flat and then puffs out again. Yeah. And I don't know if your camera can see that. I think we can, yeah. And then on Zoe, it's not quite as obvious because she's not quite as furry, <laughs> but she actually, right behind her shoulders, has a little spot right yeah. here. Yeah. And every corgi has a spot like that where Neat. the fairy saddle sits. <laughs> So, that's a true fairy tale. <laughs> so isn't that interesting, Father, because you ride the horses and you know yeah, that where it the is. saddle sits. Yeah, that does look like you could put a saddle right down. there. So the fairy could put the saddle right here oh, that's and fun. grab onto that scruffy, scruffy white spot and yep. go riding through the forest. That's fun. That sounds like something out of Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> we all, all corgis have this white mark. All of them. Yeah where the fairies will grab on and hold on. Oh, that's fun. And and the, the fun thing is they say that's one of the reasons they're mischievous because they still have that little fairy uh, oh, silliness Oh, that's funny, inside. the silliness that's there. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, that's that cool, that's cool. So Quigley and Zoe, 
Do you want to do a trick for father? Oh yeah, let's see. Let's see if we can do a trick. Come here. I'll go a little bit farther into the grass. Okay. Okay. Zoe, you're over here. Squiggly. Okay, let's see this trick. They're going to do a trick right now. Are you now. ready? Are you paying attention? So they know they have to pay attention. Well, she's not paying attention. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zoe, Zoe, you get a roll over, roll over. Ah, uh, they're rolling over. There we go. Here, let's see if I can do that again. Okay, ready? So father can see. There we go. All right, ready? Oh, now you're really stuck together. Going to roll over? Roll over. Oh. <laughs> 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 and Zoe's just like, I'm just gonna stay there. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. That's yeah, so they cool. Have fun. And his favorite trick, of course, is to beg. Yeah, where he stands like that, like yeah. a little little English butler. That's yep. right. Yes. So he um. That's so cool. We're, we're pretty careful. We give them really good treats. We what what really kind of what food. are their treats? What are they kind of well, these made are out of? Or? Free little treats. Grain free. Most, okay. Most of the time they're made out out of sweet potatoes or pumpkin. Oh wow. Food. They yeah. like vegetables. They like vegetables. Yeah. Okay. Oh, don't be too much of a beggar. <laughs> don't be too Aww. much of a beggar. Beautiful. Yeah. Good boy. See, she won't do anything. She says, keep got a treat. I want one too. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's I, got a good. <laughs> I love their, um, I love dogs, their intelligence and their loyalty. They mm -hmm. just have that, that beautiful way of being called man's best friend. And they, they really, they really do live up to that in a, in a wonderful way. They were, they were surprised when I started to work at home. Okay. They, they're used to uh, Mike working uh -huh. at home, but now that I've been working at home, they come and they get me. Uh, they tell me it's time for work. <laughs> they take me into my little office. Uh -huh. and they, they stand guard. Wow. Until I'm done. And if I forget it's a work day, they're like, wait a minute. Uh huh. You have to go to work. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you so much for just this wonderful treat of bringing out uh, these furry friends for so many kids and families to be able to see. Mm -hmm. And maybe we could give them a little blessing right now. How about I that? Love that. Thank you. Through the intercession of St. Francis. Okay, sit down. All Pay right. Attention. Sit. Get In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we ask that you bless all, bless both Quigley and Zoe. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of their furry lives. We ask that you bless them, help them to be good dogs, to be good corgis, to be able to be faithful to their owners, um, and to be able to just live out the, the joy that, uh, that they have in just being dogs. So we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord Thank bless you. these dogs, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good job. All right. Well, God bless you all. And thank you so much. Thank this was a great, great treat. Oh, it's a treat to be here. Thank you. So all right. Much. God bless you all. Maybe we can all wave, maybe from, from your place at home, you can wave to Quigley and Zoe as they go off to have a nice little walk. All right, bye-bye. All right. Well, that was a really cool treat. And we still have another treat as we come back into the school because we are going to read another story from the adventures of Winnie the Pooh. So how about that? Wasn't that neat to be able to see those dogs and just how... Those dogs are, there's, you know, they have those different colors on them, which was even that fun little story, kind of almost like a Narnian story. I have to turn on our light here. There we go. We are back in our spot for the virtual neighborhood. Remember this spot right here. All right, and I'm actually gonna change this camera a little bit. Whoops. Let's keep it like that. It's kind of funny when you move it around like that. All right, so I have my gloves on that are the same color right here. So that way I'd be able to pet those dogs at that time. So I'm gonna take off my gloves. So now that I'm back on in here, and we are going to read a story. This next story 
is chapter six, in which Eeyore has a birthday and gets two presents. So if you remember last time, we heard about the heffalumps. We heard about how they, um, uh, there was that heffalump trap and Pooh was the one who got stuck in it and Piglet thought that there was a heffalump there. Kind of some real funny moments like that. So now we're back looking at Eeyore. Remember how Eeyore, the last time we met him, he lost his tail um, and then uh, Pooh was able to find it. So now Eeyore is gonna have a birthday and on birthdays, you get presents, but let's see what happens to, to Eeyore right here. So I'm gonna bring this over just a little bit more. How about that? That might be a little better. Okay. All right. And since we just saw some dogs from uh, the English Isles, the Welsh Isles, Welsh Corgis, I have to switch into my Father Andy version of a British accent. Chapter six in which Eeyore has a birthday and gets two presents. Eeyore, the old gray donkey, stood by the side of the stream and looked at himself in the water. Pathetic, he said. That's what it is, pathetic. Not a very happy guy right now. He turned and walked slowly down the stream for 20 yards, splashed across it, and walked slowly back on the other side. Then he looked at himself in the water again. As I thought, he said, no better from this side, but nobody minds, nobody cares. Pathetic, that's what it is. There was a crackling noise in the bracken behind him and out came Pooh. Good morning, Eeyore, said Pooh. Good morning, Pooh Bear, said Eeyore gloomily, if it is a good morning. Which I doubt, he said. Why? What's the matter? Here's a picture of Eeyore right there, just kind of being gloomy. Nothing, Pooh Bear, nothing. We can't all, and some of us don't. That's all there is to it. Can't all what? said Pooh, rubbing his nose. Happiness! Song and dance! Here we go round the mulberry bush. Oh, said Pooh. He thought for a long time and then asked, What mulberry bush is that? Bon or me? went on Eeyore gloom gloomily. French word meaning bon ami. He explained, I'm not complaining, but there it is. Pooh sat down on a, loud, on a large stone and tried to think this out. It sounded to him like a riddle, and he was never much good at riddles, being a bear of very little brain. So he sang Cottleston Pie instead. Cottleston, Cottleston, Cottleston Pie. A fly can't bird, but a bird can fly. Ask me a riddle and I reply. Cottleston, Cottleston, Cottleston Pie. That was the first verse. When he had finished it, Eeyore didn't exactly say that he didn't like it, so Pooh very kindly sang the second verse to him. Cottleston, Cottleston, Cottleston Pie. A fish can't whistle, and neither can I. Ask me a riddle, and I reply, Cottleston, Cottleston, Cottleston Pie. Eeyore still said nothing at all. So Pooh hummed the third verse quietly to himself. Cottleston, Cottleston, Cottleston Pie. Why does a chicken? I don't know why. Ask me a riddle and I reply. Cottleston, Cottleston, Cottleston Pie. That's right, said Eeyore. Sing, um ti tiddly um ti too. Here we go gathering nuts and may enjoy yourself. I am, said Pooh. Some can, said Eeyore. Why, what is the matter? Is anything the matter? 
You seem so sad, Eeyore. Sad? Why should I be sad? It's my birthday. The happiest day of the year. Your birthday, said Pooh in great surprise. Of course it is. Can't you see? Look at all the presents I have. He waved a foot from side to side. Look at the birthday cake. Candles and pink sugar. Pooh looked, first to the right, and then to the left. A present, said Pooh. A birthday cake, said Pooh. Where? Can't you see them? No, said Pooh. Neither can I, said Eeyore. Joke, he explained. Ha, ha. Pooh scratched his head, being a little puzzled by all this. But is it really your birthday, he asked. It is. Oh, well, many happy returns of the day, Eeyore. And many happy returns to you, Pooh Bear. But it isn't my birthday. No, it's mine. But you said many happy returns. Well, why not? You don't always want to be miserable on my birthday, do you? Oh, I see, said Pooh. It's bad enough, said Eeyore, almost breaking down, being miserable myself. What with no presents and no cake and no candles and no proper notice taken of me at all. But if everyone else is going to be miserable too... This was too much for Pooh. Stay there, he called to Eeyore. As he turned and hurried back home as quick as he could, for he felt that he must get poor Eeyore a present of some sort at once, and he could always think of a proper one afterwards. Outside his house, he found Piglet jumping up and down, trying to reach the knocker. Hello, Pil Piglet, he said. See, there's a picture right there, Piglet trying to get the doorbell right there. Hello, Pooh, said Piglet. What are you trying to do? I was trying to reach the knocker, said Piglet. I just came round. Let me do it for you, said Pooh kindly. So he reached up and knocked at the door. I have just seen Eeyore, he began, and poor Eeyore is in a very sad condition. Because it's his birthday, and nobody has taken any notice of it, and he's very gloomy. You know what Eeyore is, and there he was, and what a long time whoever lives here is answering the door. And he knocked again, so he's knocking at his own door. But Pooh, said Piglet, it's your own house. Oh, said Pooh, so it is. He said, well... Let's go in. So in they went. The first thing Pooh did was to go to the cupboard to see if he had quite a small jar of honey left. And he had, so he took it down. I'm giving this to Eeyore, he explained, as a present. What are you going to give? Couldn't I give it too, said Piglet, from both of us? No, said Pooh, that would not be a good plan. All right, then. I'll give him a balloon. I've got one left from my party. I'll go and get it now, shall I? That piglet is a very good idea. It just came. It's, it is just what Eeyore wants to cheer him up. Nobody can be uncheered with a balloon. So off piglet trotted, and in the other direction went Pooh with his jaw of honey. It was a warm day, and he had a long way to go. He hadn't gone more than halfway when a sort of funny feeling began to creep all over him. It began at the tip of his nose and trickled all through him and out at the soles of his feet. It was just as if somebody inside him were saying, Now then, Pooh, now time for a little something. Dear, dear, said Pooh, I didn't know it was as late as that. 
So he sat down and took the top off of his jaw of honey. Luckily, I brought this with me, he thought. Many a bear going out on a warm day like this would never have thought of bringing a little something with him. And he began to eat. And now, let me see, he thought, as he took his last lick of the inside of the jaw. Where was I going? Ah, oh, yes, Eeyore. He got up slowly. And then, suddenly, he remembered. He had eaten Eeyore's birthday present. Bother, said Pooh. What shall I do? I must give him something. For a little while, he couldn't think of anything, and then he thought, well, it's a very nice pot, even, even there's no honey in it. And if I washed it clean and got somebody to write a happy birthday on it, Eeyore could keep things in it, which might be useful. So, as he was just passing the Hundred Acre Wood, he went inside to call on Owl, who lived there. Good morning, Owl, he said. Good morning, Pooh, said Owl. Many happy returns of Eeyore's birthday, said Pooh. Oh, is that what it is? What are you giving him, Owl? What are you giving him, Pooh? I'm giving him a useful pot to keep things in. And I wanted to ask you, is this it? Said Owl, taking it out of Pooh's paw. Yes, and I wanted to ask you, somebody has been keeping honey in it, said Owl. You can keep anything in it, said Pooh earnestly. It is very useful like that. And I wanted to ask you, you ought to write happy birthday on it. That what was what I wanted to ask you, said Pooh, because my spelling is wobbly. It's good spelling, but it wobbles. And the letters get in the wrong places. Would you write a happy birthday on it for me? It's a nice pot said Owl, looking all around it. Couldn't I give it too from both of us? No, said Pooh, that would not be a good plan. Now, I'll just wash it first, and then you can write on it. Well, he washed the pot out, dried it, while Owl licked the end of his pencil and wondered how to spell birthday. See, there's Owl right there. Can you read, Pooh, he asked a little anxiously. There's a notice about knocking and ringing outside my door, which Christopher Robin wrote. Could you read it? Christopher Robin told me what it said. Then I could. Well, I'll tell you what this says, and then you'll be able to. So, Owl wrote, and uh, this is what he wrote. That's what it says. That is what he wrote. Pooh looked on admirably. I'm just saying a happy birthday, said Owl carelessly. It's a nice long one, said Pooh, very much impressed by it. Well, actually, of course, I'm saying a very happy birthday with love from Pooh. Naturally, it takes a good deal of pencil to say a long thing like that. Oh, I see, said Pooh. While all this was happening, Piglet had gone back to his own house to get Eeyore's balloon. He held it very tightly against himself so that it shouldn't blow away, and he ran as fast as he could to get it to Eeyore before Pooh did, for he thought that he would like to be the first one to give a present, just as if he had thought of it without being told by anybody. And running along and thinking how pleased Eeyore would be, he didn't look where he was going, and suddenly he put his foot in a rabbit hole, fell down flat on his face, and bang! Do you see what happened? It got popped. Piglet lay there, wondering what had happened. At first, he thought that the whole world had blown up. And then he thought that perhaps only the force part of it had. And then he thought that perhaps only he had. And then he was now alone in the moon or somewhere and would never see Christopher Robin or Pooh or Eeyore again. And then he thought, well, even if I'm in the moon, I needn't be face down all the time. 
So he got up cautiously and looked about him. He was still in the forest. Well, that's funny, he thought. I wonder what that bang was. I couldn't have made such a noise just falling down. And where's my balloon? And what's that small piece of damp rag doing? It was the balloon. Oh dear, said Piglet. Oh dear, oh dearie, 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 dear. Well, it's too late now. Perhaps I can't go back. And I haven't another balloon. And perhaps Eeyore doesn't like balloons so very much. So he trotted on, and rather sadly now, and down he came to the side of the stream where Eeyore was, and called out to him. Good morning, Eeyore, shouted Piglet. Good morning, little Piglet, said Eeyore. If it is a good morning, he said, which I doubt, and said, not that it matters. He said that too. Many happy returns of the day, said Piglet, having now got closer. Eeyore stopped looking at himself in the stream and turned to stare at Piglet. Just say that again, he said. Many ha- Wait a moment. Balancing on three legs, he began to bring his fourth leg very cautiously up to his ear. I did this yesterday, he explained as he fell down for the third time. It's quite easy. It's so- as I can hear better. There, that's done it. Now then, what were you saying? He pushed his ear forward with his hoof. Many happy returns of the day, said Piglet again. Meaning me? Of course, Eeyore. My birthday? Yes. Me? Having a real birthday? Yes, Eeyore, and I've brought you a present. Eeyore took down his right hoof from his right ear, turned around, and with great difficulty put up his left hoof. I must have that in the other ear, he said. Now then... A present, said Piglet very loudly, meaning me again. Yes, my birthday still. Of course, Eeyore. Me going on having a real birthday. Yes, Eeyore, and I've brought you a balloon. Balloon, said Eeyore. You did say balloon, one of those big colored things you blow up? Happiness, song and dance, here we are and there we are. Yes, but I'm afraid I'm very sorry, Eeyore, but when I was running along to bring it to you, it fell down. Dear, dear, how unlucky. You ran too fast, I expect. You didn't hurt yourself, little piglet. No, but I, I, oh, your, I burst the balloon. There was a very long silence. My balloon, said Eeyore at last. Piglet nodded. My Birthday balloon. Yes, Eeyore, said Piglet, sniffling a little. Here it is, with many happy returns of the day. And he gave Eeyore the damp piece of damp rag. Kind of like that. Is this it? said Eeyore, a little surprised. Piglet nodded. My present, Piglet nodded again. The balloon, yes. Thank you, Piglet, said Eeyore. You don't mind me asking, he went on, but what color was this balloon when it, when it was a balloon? Red. I just wondered. Red. 
He murmured to himself, my favorite color. How big was it? About as big as me. I just wondered, about as big as Piglet. He said to himself sadly, my favorite size. Well, well. Piglet felt miserable and didn't know what to say. He was still opening his mouth to begin something and then deciding that it wasn't any good saying that when he heard a shout from the other side of the river and there was Pooh. Many happy returns of the day, called out Pooh, forgetting that he had said it already. Thank you, Pooh, I'm having them, said Eeyore gloomily. I've brought you a little present, said Pooh excitedly. I've had it, said Eeyore. Pooh had now splashed across the stream to Eeyore, and Piglet was sitting a little way off, his head in his paws, snuffling to himself. It's a useful pot, said Pooh. Here it is, and it's got a very happy birthday with love from Pooh written on it. That's what all the writing is, and it's for putting things in. There. When Eeyore saw the pot, he became quite excited. Why? He said, I believe my balloon will just go into that pot. Oh no, Eeyore, said Pooh. Balloons are much too big to go into pots. What you do with a balloon is you hold the balloon. Not mine, said Eeyore proudly. Look, Piglet. And as Piglet looked sorrowfully round, Eeyore picked up the balloon with his teeth, placed it in carefully in the pot, picked it out again and put it on the ground, and then picked it up again and put it carefully back. So it does, said Pooh. It goes in. So it does, said Piglet, and it comes out. Doesn't it, said Eeyore. It goes in and out like anything. I'm very glad, said Pooh happily that I thought of giving you a useful pot to put things in. I'm very glad, said Piglet happily, that I thought of giving you something to put in a useful pot. But Eeyore wasn't listening. He was taking the balloon out, putting it back in again, as happily as could be. And I, and didn't I give him something, asked Christopher Robin sadly. Of course you did, I said. You gave him, don't you remember, a little, a little... I gave him a box of paints to paint things with. That was it. Why didn't I give it to him in the morning? You were so busy getting his party ready for him. He had a cake with icing on the top and three candles and his name in pink sugar. And yes, I remember, said Christopher Robin. And there is Eeyore having a splendid good time on his very happy birthday. So what a beautiful chapter and what a beautiful time today where we got to meet some furry friends and their owners, um, Mike and Barb. We were able to meet Quigley and Zoe and get to learn a little bit about Welsh corgis. Um, but then we got to read a beautiful um, thing about how sometimes we can have different unfortunate things happen, different moments that we weren't expecting, and yet we can find good out of that situation. And you know, there's a, there's a person named St. Augustine. Maybe you've heard of St. Augustine before. Um, maybe you know someone named Augustine or Augustine. Well, he said that God is so powerful that he can take even the, the bad things, the difficult things that happen in this world, and God is so powerful that he can draw some sort of good out of anything. And so in those moments where maybe you're having a tough day, let God come into that tough day moment. Just like Eeyore, there was a tough day moment in which everyone forgot about his birthday. I don't know if you've ever had that before. Forget about someone's birthday and how sad they feel. Um, but then Eeyore 
the two things that Pooh and Piglet wanted to be able to give him, Piglet's thing popped, and Pooh ate all the honey there, and it became something to put in, a, a useful pot to put things in. But even in the midst of that sad moment of those things, maybe the presents not being the ones that they were originally wanting to give, they actually became something even better. If Piglet hadn't popped that balloon, it wouldn't have been able to fit inside of the jar, the pot to put useful things in. So whenever we're going through a difficult moment, whenever we have a rain cloud day, where it just kind of feels tough, always know that above that rain cloud, above those shadows there, always rides the sun. And the sun will still be able to shine upon us even in those moments that are kind of tough. And in fact, sometimes even those tough moments will be able to find something even greater on the other side because of that moment. So that's how we can hold on to the promise of the Lord, who the toughest moment in his life was Good Friday. You remember when Jesus died upon the cross? But instead of being Bad Friday, we call it Good Friday. Because in the toughest moment of Jesus' life became the greatest moment of being able to conquer sin and death. And that's why we celebrate good news. So Lord, we thank you for this day. We ask that you bless our weekend. Help it to be a safe weekend. Help it to be a, 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 a beautiful weekend. And that we might always keep our eyes fixed on the Lord. Who can always bring good out of any tough moment. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you guys so much as well for commenting there. Um, I see I see our friend Jimena was saying that was a sad story, but it turned out pretty happy in the end. And then the Kendall family saying it's a fun story. Thank you for reading it. Um, Winnie the Pooh is a very fun story. Um, very, uh, very, very good, fun stories with some really neat, beautiful messages in them. All right. So remember, we're going to meet on Monday. So we're off Saturday and Sunday. So have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed time with your family. All right. God bless you. Bye-bye.